Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. In this video, of our DSO-138 oscilloscope series, we will talk about one very important functionality of oscilloscope, a time division. So, let's get started. In one of the previous videos, we talked about important parameters of every signal, especially period, and frequency. Let us remind ourselves the definitions. Period is value of time, expressed in seconds, that tells us how long does it take for signal to complete one entire life cycle, and then, starts to repeat. Frequency tells us how many times in one second, the signal completes his full cycle. As frequency goes higher, the period grows shorter, and vice versa. The frequency is inversely proportional to period of the signal. These two parameters are closely connected to time division functionality of the oscilloscope. The time division functionality enables us to properly scale signal display in regard to frequency and period of signal. For the purpose of this video, we have rendered a template of oscilloscope screen. As we can see, entire screen is divided into mesh of 12 by 8 squares, vertical and horizontal center line, with subdivision markers. Now, the most important question is, what is the value of one square in seconds? The time division function of the oscilloscope answers this question. In our oscilloscope's board introductory video, we briefly mentioned time division functionality. The DSO-138 oscilloscope provides us with 24 possible settings for time division function. The values are displayed on the screen, with highest value being 500 seconds, and lowest value being 10 microseconds. The values are set by using select push button to set focus on time division icon, the third one from the left, and then by using plus and minus push buttons to set appropriate value. By setting the value of time division function you are manually redefining a value of horizontal axis, the time axis, and setting horizontal value of one square of display's mesh. Now, let's put all this theory into work. For demonstration purposes we will select the most basic setup to demonstrate time division functionality. Let's provide our oscilloscope with square signal that has period of exactly one second. That implies that frequency of our signal is 1 Hz. Now, let's set our time division function of the oscilloscope to 1 second. Can you guess how many squares of our mesh the signal will fill? If you have answered 1 square, you are correct. With time division parameter set to 1 second, our signal that has period of 1 second, fills 1 square on our display mesh, respect to width. Now, at this point in time, we are not concerned about height of the signal, just its width. In next video, we will demonstrate how to scale signal vertically. So, let's recapitulate. By setting time division parameter of our oscilloscope to 1 second, we are manually defining that horizontal width of one square of mesh has value of one second. Now, let's see what will happen when we keep the same signal, but change time division value. Can you guess what will happen with our signal when we set time division value to 2 seconds, and 0.5 seconds, respectively? In which scenario will our signal expand, and in which scenario will it compact? In other words, when will our signal compact to occupy only half of a square on display mesh, and when will expand to occupy two squares on display mesh? Let's analyze first scenario. Let's set our time division value to 2 seconds. This means, that now, the width value of one square is 2 seconds. So, in this scenario, our signal now occupy only half of one square of display's mesh. We can conclude, that by increasing time division parameter, and setting it to a higher value, we are in fact compacting our signal, making it denser, so that more periods of signal can be displayed on screen simultaneously. Analog to first, in our second scenario, 
let's set our time division value to 0.5 seconds. This means, that now, the width value of 1 square is 0.5 seconds. So, in this scenario, our signal now occupies 2 squares of display's mesh. We can conclude, that by decreasing time division parameter, and setting it to a lower value, we are in fact expanding our signal, making it wider, so that less periods of signal can be displayed on screen simultaneously. Now, let's consider a real-life scenario. You have sourced a signal without any advanced knowledge of its parameters. Let's see how we can use what we have learned so far, to calculate period and frequency of such signal. From previous videos we have learned how to stabilize signal display, and center the signal both vertically, and horizontally. From this video we have learned that, by manipulating time division parameter we can horizontally resize our signal to achieve best display. After all adjustments have been made, we can see that our signal now occupies three full squares of display's mesh, and three-fifths of fourth square. We have adjusted our time division parameter, and set its value to 20 milliseconds. So, let's do the math. The width of one square is 20 milliseconds, so three squares are 60 milliseconds. Now three-fifths of fourth square are 12 milliseconds, so when we add all full and fractal square values that our signal occupies, we get value of 72 milliseconds. So, by observing our signal on oscilloscope display, and doing the math, we calculated that our unknown signal has a period of 72 milliseconds. From this value, we can easily calculate frequency of our signal. By applying formula for frequency, where frequency is inversely proportional to the period, we get that the frequency of our signal is 13.8 Hz. This concludes our demonstration of time division functionality for DSO-138 oscilloscope. In next video we will demonstrate how to resize and manipulate the height of the signal, by using voltage range selector, and multiplier switch, so stay tuned. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.